Alright, welcome to another what I what I've watched video. For some reason I have such problems pronouncing that. I've tried to do this two times already and I always screw up or those times anyway I also screwed up what I've watched. Can't seem to pronounce it. Anyway, <laughs> it's one of those videos and I'm gonna talk about Swedish titles and this might I've done this a few times before and it might not be uh interesting to everyone, uh but I think to some people some pe I think some people are interested so and I, I enjoy talking about some Swedish stuff. So yeah, this is basically what I've been getting on DVD over the past months or weeks or whatever. A lot of stuff have been stacking up that, I've, that I have to talk about. And I've chosen a few titles for this video. I never know exactly how many titles I'm gonna get through because sometimes I talk a little bit too long. <laughs> but I have a bunch of stuff here so I definitely have enough for a video. So let's just start with um, with a pretty atypical uh, Swedish movie, or as far as as, as uh, you know, me showing Swedish stuff goes, this is n not very typical. Uh, I mean, I usually show a lot of comedy, and there might be a lot of comedy in this too. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is a crime thriller, uh, not exactly a crime mystery. A little, well, a little bit, but it's mainly a crime thriller, and um, it's about the character Beck, which um, has been portrayed by several actors, uh, not. I don't think only Swedish actors. Uh, I'm not too sure. There are a bunch of Swedish Beck movies and they're played by a guy called Peter Haber and I've never seen any of those, uh, not really. Uh, I might have catched a few glimpses of certain movies when I was a child but uh, I need to watch some of those because I'm actually kinda interested. But this one was made way before those. This is from 1976 and the guy playing Beck is uh, this guy called Gustav Lindstedt, this guy, and uh, yeah, the 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 movie is called Mannen på taket, and that translates to the man on the roof. Um, uh, but the movie starts with um, uh, a cop who seems to have a lot of sort of, um, well, he seems to have a lot of enemies, uh, and he gets murdered when when he is in the hospital because he is uh, sick. He's uh, in in the hospital for some reason. Um, and he gets brutally murdered in the beginning of the beginning of the movie, which is a very um, indeed a very bloody and gory and brutal sequence, which took a long time a long time to get right. Uh, I I heard on or I yeah they said that on the audio commentary, um, which features by the way I believe the director, the producer, and some film. Um, no, excuse me, of course not the director, uh, but the producer and one of the actors, and some sort of film um, buff, film historian, film, um, you know, whatever, uh, film reviewer of some sort. Uh, but uh, yeah, then the cop, M Martin Beck, right here, he is the sort of main cop uh, who has to solve this, this, uh, this, this murder. And um, there are also a couple other people uh, for example, Sven Volter, who's the actor in the commentary track, he's one of the cops who needs to solve it. Uh, and then the man on the roof, that doesn't actually happen until halfway through the movie. And then things get a little bit more, um, well, more fast-paced, more action-packed, more, uh, <laughs> more to the point or whatever. Uh, before that, I actually like the part before the most, because it's investigating, it's uh, a lot of good dialogue, a lot of great acting and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, I, do, I don't watch a lot of these kinds of movies from Sweden, uh, but I had heard about this movie for a while and I finally got around to watch it. Well, it's been a while since I watched it now, but um, anyway, and I'm gonna move on to something which also stars this guy, which I actually watched yesterday and today, or no, yesterday and two days ago. It's a miniseries called Papa's Pojkar, which translates to Daddy's Boys. You can see the same guy here, <clears throat> this guy. And he's right here. This is this one was from 1976. This from 1973. And I'm showing them because it has the same actor, but they are drastically different. This is a miniseries, like I said, a comedy. Only has four episodes from, like I said, 1973. Uh, this is directed by Lasse Hallström. He went on to make Hollywood movies later on. Um, Chocolat, I think he made. Uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. A bunch of other movies recently. Uh, but this I, it might have been the first thing he directed. I mean, it's 40 years ago, so it was at least a very early movie or early show. Uh, basically, uh, Papa, the dad, he uh, is played by Carl Gustav Lindstedt. 
a very different performance from this. Uh, when I watch him in this, I cannot imagine him as this character, because in this one he's a very serious guy who needs to solve this crime, and he, you know, doesn't have time for anything else. But this guy is a goofy comedic character, you know, who just screws everything up. Um, so it's really cool to see him, you know, as you know. I didn't know that he was that versatile when I watched this movie. Uh, but he is definitely, um, and I've actually come to like him now only from seeing him in this movie and then this show. But he takes, anyway, his character, he takes a bunch of different jobs. The four episodes don't really have anything to do with each other. Because in the first episode his job is, he's some sort of head waiter slash chef. Uh, in the second episode he's a babysitter, which is pretty random. Uh, third, ep third episode he is some sort of butler or something, uh, you know, um, you know, for a uh, rich guy who lives in a castle or whatever. And then in the fourth, ep fourth episode he is uh, a cleaner slash security guy, maybe you could say, uh, at a bank. Uh, so I kind of wonder what the episodes have to do with, e with each other. And I've come to the conclusion, not much, because I don't know what happened in between him being a chef and then a babysitter all, all of a sudden. It doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. You can watch them individually. Uh, it doesn't. You don't have to watch all of them. You can just watch one of them, and whichever one you want to watch is fine. Um, but he gets in trouble in in these jobs that he's doing, and he get he needs to call his guy, his boys, uh, Magnus Herrenstam and Brasse Brenström, two guys, um, two actors, Swedish people will most likely recognize because they've done a lot of stuff together. Um, and uh, they need to help him solve whatever problem he is run into. Um, and it's not great. I've had my eyes out, out for this for a while. Finally found it for about three bucks US. <clears throat> and I was really excited to watch it, but it's not great. It's really kind of kind of poor. Not hasn't doesn't have a lot of good comedy to offer. Some good stuff. Um, like uh, I, I do like some of his performances or some of his stuff. Uh, he has a pretty funny way of, of talking, of delivering his lines, of reasoning and stuff like that, and I've always appreciated that with him, because he they've done a children's show together way back in the 70s too, and I used to watch that when I was a child. So I've known about these guys forever, you know, and uh, always been a fan. But anyway, so uh, that's pretty much what it is. Um, like I said, the quality of the show isn't great. I don't know how to explain it, because the episodes, they kind of differ a little bit from each other. Um, but uh, it's just not great, at least. That's that's all I can say. Well, uh, since I just talked about a children's show that I used to watch, uh, let's move on to another children's show. Uh, <laughs> you know, there needs to be some sort of um, you know transition here. Whatever. Um, yeah. När karusellerna sover, when the uh, rides, carousels are asleep, you know, uh, at an amusement park. Um, this one I used to absolutely love. You can see here it's from 1998. It says uh, World's Best Christmas Calendars. And this is the one from 1998, because ever since the 60s in Sweden there has been, and in other Scandinavian countries too, uh, maybe not since the 60s, I don't know. But they exist in other Scandin Scandinavian countries too. There has been a so-called Christmas calendar with an episode uh, where the show is usually directed towards children, or always actually, um, and these these episodes are shown in the morning uh, in December, from December 1st to December 24th. Um, so it's kind of like, um, you know, waiting for Christmas with these characters. Uh, this one is about um, an, an amusement park that this guy he happens to find it, um, em well, it's empty because it's in the winter, but he happens to find a way in, and he realizes that it's alive, even in the winter. Uh, I mean, alive, you know, people are working there and stuff is happening. And uh, that's just, to me back then, in 19, well, I might not have watched it in 1998, but a few a few years later, that was just such a, an exciting concept to me, and I, I've watched this many times, barred it, uh, or rented it on, on VHS, and I watched it on YouTube a few years ago, at least most of it. Uh, and yeah, but this this I watched actually last Christmas, I th I think. It's been that long? I guess maybe it has. Uh, but um, I, I can't say I like it that much these days. Um, it's obviously directed towards children. 
Uh, but I do like watching these Christmas calendars. Uh, this year I'm going to get another couple of them, I think. And uh, it's just fun to revisit. Uh, so yeah, 24 episodes, about 15 minutes each. And you can see a bunch of the other ones um, on DVD. Then this one I don't have too much to say, but I did like it quite a bit. Salt Urn, which is the place of kind of like a, an archipelago type place. Um, I forget where in Sweden this is located. Um, if it was on the west coast or the east coast, I should know this, but I actually don't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, it's three seasons. Uh, it says thir 13 hours here from 2005 to 2010. It's about uh, these characters' lives and more characters too, who live at this place called Saltan. A very sort of, um, um, well, very unbusy place, kind of, kind of quaint little place for people who um, uh, kind of want to take it easy, you could say. Um, and um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I have seen the first season on TV when that was aired, at least some of the episodes. Uh, but I never saw the, the other the other two, but I enjoyed it. It's uh, I don't have too much to say, but it's a fun little cozy show about these characters living their lives at, on this little archipelago. So yeah, Salt Urn that translates to the salty island. By the way, uh, this word only uh means island, strangely enough. Uh, and then yeah, the salty island all together or you know so yeah I have time for another title um, let's see actually let's show two titles that are kind of well like some kind of have a little bit to do with each other because they're two DVDs of, with two uh, Swedish comedians first one being Thomas Petters Petter Thomas Pettersson he's actually from my hometown uh, this it says best off and I thought that it was a collection of skits and appearances that he's done but it's actually a stand-up show, uh, which I did not enjoy. I watched maybe 20 minutes, 30 tops, and I it's a two-hour two-hour show, and I I really didn't like it. I didn't think that it was that great. Uh, it's just not my kind of humor, and I guess uh, I've I've only seen him in these kind of game shows or panel shows uh, before. I haven't seen his stand-up, and I I guess now I know for a fact that, for a fact that it's not my thing. Uh, there's also a behind-the-scenes featurette where he talks a little bit about his stuff, and I just, I didn't, well, I don't know, didn't like it. This one I did like, uh, the very best with Felix Hangrian, this time it is actually uh, a best, an actual best-off, not a stand-up performance. Uh, that, by the way, is called best-off because he, he talks about, in the 80s and 90s, his uh, best bits from, from those times, I guess. This one includes a bunch of stuff that this comedian has done in various shows and appearances and stuff. It actually also has an audio commentary with him where he talks about this stuff and I believe I listened to the whole thing um, and that was pr pretty interesting. Uh, that's pretty uncommon uh, for you know a DVD like this to have an audio commentary, a Swedish one. And yeah obviously here on the front you can tell that it's uh, you know a bunch of different pictures from char characters that he's made and they've put them together so it looks like one person, I guess. Uh, yeah, pretty cool cover, I guess. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this was uh, a lot of fun, I thought. So yeah, how many titles did I talk about? Six. Well, I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight other titles here to talk about. Uh, obviously, I didn't have time with for all of them, but uh, you know. Um, yeah, so hopefully someone enjoyed this, and uh, I guess I'll make another one eventually. So yeah, thank you for watching.